What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos and I put them on the internet. Tonight I'd like to talk about what is the best Linux distribution? Now that's a loaded question and I hate to use a cop-out answer but I really feel like it's the best one. The best Linux distribution is what works best for you. And what do I mean by that? If Apple were to make a hundred different versions of OS X, call them distributions of OS X, if you will, and you had uh, the opportunity to try them all, one of those, or a few of those, you would find yourself gravitating to, for whatever reason. Maybe it's an aesthetic appeal, maybe it's ease of use, maybe it's a set of core applications. Regardless, you're going to find yourself gravitating to one or two or various versions out of those 100. Same thing with Microsoft and Windows. If Microsoft made a hundred different versions of Windows and again you had the opportunity to try them all, you're going to gravitate toward um, the ones that suit your needs or suit your aesthetic appeal or ease of use or whatever your criteria is, you're going to gravitate toward um, certain versions of either operating system. And Linux finds itself in a very unique position because unlike some of the other popular desktop operating systems, I mean, I guess you could argue that Microsoft has different versions, but, you know, when you really look at it, they, they offer, you know, very stripped down versions for a lower price or very, you know, quote unquote, feature rich versions for a higher price, but that's all just to get more money. Um, you know, Apple, in, in terms of software, I think, actually prices their operating system at least fairly. Uh, it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, and they don't have a million different versions. But that's neither here nor there. So Linux is in a really unique position because, you know, actually Linux obviously is just a kernel, and you've got GNU slash Linux, which is the operating system that most of us know and, and love. But there's so many different distributions, and all of those distributions are based on, some of them are derivative, and by that I mean they're based on other distributions. Some of them are, you know, you know, distributions that are core or foundational that, you know, have been around for a very long time. Some of the ones I'm, that come to mind are Debian or Fedora. So, which one is best? I get a PM or two on YouTube almost every week asking me, what is the best distribution? And for me, as of right now, and I, I should probably preface what I'm about to say with this, the distribution that you think is best today may not be what you think is the best tomorrow. And what I mean by that is when you look at Ubuntu, for instance, 10.10 .10 was, in my opinion, a, a fantastic release for the Ubuntu team. I really enjoyed Ubuntu 10.10. .10. Every other release since, I have not liked, and that's probably putting it in a very nice way. Um, no disrespect to the Ubuntu uh, guys, I think a lot of what they're doing is very good, but I just don't connect with that distribution. It doesn't suit my needs. Um, you know, that's what I mean by what suits, what, what you think is the best distribution today may not be the, what you think the best distribution is tomorrow. Linux Mint 10, and I've said this in my other videos, is probably my favorite distribution of all time. I that's that's the distribution that basically convinced me to to migrate from Mac OS 10 over to Linux. That was a phenomenal release. But perfect example, you know, Linux Mint 11 wasn't wasn't bad, but ever since probably Linux Mint 11, I haven't been able to feel comfortable in a Linux Mint. Uh, variant. So again, what I thought at one point in time was was the best distribution of of all time. Uh, today, I, I just don't find myself comfortable in the Mint ecosystem. So for me, elementary OS is where I find myself feeling most at home. Uh, elementary OS to me is a representation of uh, people that are daring. It's a representation of innovation. It's a representation of rebellion. I mean, you, you take a group of, of people, of developers, that say, you know what, we don't want to do what everyone else is doing. We're going to rebel against the status quo. We're not going to take something like Gnome Shell and just write a bunch of extensions for it or 
We're not going to use KDE and we're not going to use XFCE. We have something very specific in mind that we want to achieve and the only way to do that is to write it from scratch. So elementary OS Luna took Ubuntu 12.04 as a base and they've been criticized for this and you know I, I don't want to beat them up too bad about it because quite frankly it was probably the best decision and let me qualify that statement because again I just said that I wasn't a huge Ubuntu fan but when you look at um, elementary itself Ubuntu is basically the foundation of the building when you take its file system when you take its repositories and its packaging uh, structure that's pretty much where Ubuntu ends and the elementary team builds their house on top of that foundation and everything else is very unique to elementary elementary is doing things like focusing on the core user experience which in being a former Mac OS 10 user I appreciate because I didn't think that anyone really was getting user experience as right as Apple but elementary is really focusing on that core user experience which is that connection between the software and the in the op well the software and the operating system there it's all software but the applications you find within the distribution the core applications and the software the operating system itself no other distribution that I'm aware of is writing as many core applications and by core applications what do I mean I mean they have of course their own terminal and their text editor and their music player and they have a lot of core applications that haven't made it into Luna yet that'll probably be available in Luna plus one they have a a, a, a video player they have a screen capture uh, recordings they have uh, I think note applications they have all sorts of core applications and they all have this specific look and feel and design philosophy that fit with the operating system and no other distribution is doing that right now and they're even I know they're actually creating their own software center as well no one is trying to create this perfectly harmonized experience like elementary is and I love that I mean they've created their own desktop shell pantheon they've got their own window manager gala they've got their own um, uh, application framework that they've created all of these things come together in this really amazing package and they use a packaging standard which is my preference which is Debian's packaging standard um, and you know of course being built on top of the foundation of Ubuntu you have all of that software in the repositories not only that you have the commercial appeal look for instance at a project like Steam you know Steam had uh, has basically come out and endorsed Ubuntu as their official distribution that they're supporting you know that's powerful you know you've got companies like HP or even Asus that also in system 76 that get behind the Ubuntu project uh, as much criticism as Ubuntu comes under all that you know at times you know they've put themselves out there and they've accomplished some great things and elementary gets to benefit from that you know I would love to see the elementary team take on a kernel developer or at least somebody that can come in and clean up the the Ubuntu kernel because I, I don't particularly care for the Ubuntu kernel I think that there's a lot of bugs and uh, they get introduced by the uh, tweaks and modifications that the the canonical and the Ubuntu team make on, on the kernel I would love to see somebody come in for elementary and and change that a little bit but other than that elementary OS Luna is a, an awesome collaboration of a group of young um, very bright individuals who have a specific goal in mind. They're very focused. They have a huge attention to detail. They've created a beautiful operating system. Um, I don't know why that everyone just tosses um, the aesthetic of an operating system down down the toilet. But you know, if you if you were to read up or or watch some videos and interviews of early Steve Jobs. Um, when he was with Apple and the attention that to detail he took with things like typeface I mean it, it's amazing and, and when you look at you know the Apple product today both the hardware and the software it's you can't deny you may not even be an Apple fan but it's gorgeous you know um, I'm an Android user but I can I can appreciate um, the beauty of an iPhone I think as an object the hardware itself is it's amazingly beautiful it's a great piece of hardware it's very aesthetically pleasing so I think that the elementary team is really focusing on that and I appreciate that because you know software is artistic and I think it 
it loses that artistic element at times um, during the whole process and and people kind of put it as an afterthought and um, I believe that something should be functional and something should make sense but I also don't think that you should lose the um, artistic element of software and I think that elementary maintains that promotes that and puts it as um, as a core piece of their development philosophy you know they do they also have one core programming language that they use they they write everything in Vala which you know again um, they've got their application framework that they develop they all um, develop in Vala one um, unified programming language so everything looks and feels the same as you move from one application to another no other distribution is doing that um, so the only thing that I would really change about elementary and I've mentioned it before is I would love to see them move more toward a timed um, or um, scheduled release cycle I think that you lose momentum in terms of your users um, when you have this kind of infinite or this when it's ready philosophy I, I don't think you should sacrifice quality just to get something out um, but this has been in beta for a very long time and when you look at how frequently that um, technology advances and how quickly it advances it's moving at a very slower net, slow rate now I, I'm not going to say that they haven't undertaken a huge project but I definitely think in the future um, they should have time or scheduled um, releases um, and if they don't meet that schedule fine you know you see that happen with Fedora all the time they have their roadmap and oftentimes um, they deviate from that but at least people have a sense of you know uh, when something may be coming out and I think they'd be able to keep momentum and keep a lot of their users on board um, and I think that you know this is such a great project I'd hate to see them lose anyone um, because they can't get out of a you know a beta stage um, but anyway to answer that question because I do get it all the time what's the best distribution what distribution should I start off with in my opinion as of right now for me elementary OS Luna is the best Linux distro out there um, so hopefully you know this video has answered some of those questions maybe it'll help you find a distribution that works best for you I'd be I'd be interested uh, leave a comment in the comment section below what's your favorite distribution maybe list a few reasons why I'd love to you know kinda of start that dialogue um, but anyway guys it's been uh, it's been great thank you for all the support thank you for watching and until next time we'll see you guys later